For how long? For how long shall they kill us? For hard. But this time, it was not from the Yulu. It was from... Elders could clearly see that he had the art of war, 
and the time came for him to join the other warriors in the battlefield. Cries of chants and voices were heard in the battlefield. How the soldiers were bringing chants of Luanda Magere. Luanda, 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 Luanda Magere had biceps, triceps, biceps, oguloceps, and seps. Luanda Magere had them all. And when the time came for him to get into the battlefield, songs were heard. Luanda, Luanda, Luanda Magere, Luanda, 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 Luanda. When the warrior got into the battlefield, cries were heard, wails were heard. But this time, it was not from the Jolu. It was from the Jolango. Luanda Magere had tattered, scattered, and killed all of them. They ran like dogs with their hearts between their legs. They ran away, fiercely fearing the famous Luanda Magere. But Luanda Magere, even though he was a warrior, he was not a complete man because he did have what makes him complete. He did have somebody by his side. So he was given a beautiful, typical Nyaluokano Tektotar lady. A very beautiful lady. And they called her Mikai. Mikai was a very beautiful lady. Luanda Magere, very happy, as happy as he was, continued to scatter the Jolango. But the Jolangos were sleepless. They couldn't sleep because this man was really dealing with them. So they tried all means. They tried witchcraft. It didn't work. They tried other tactics of battle. But it never worked on Luanda Magere. So they decided to call a truce and looked for their most beautiful, slender, and tall Nyalango. Magere had finally found a neuroscoco. Eh? He was in the mood of love. You know, Luanda Magere had fallen in love with this Nyalango. But there are some people who are worried. The council of elders and the villagers called Luanda Magere not to accept that woman. That she could have been a spy from the Jolango. But as we all know, a man in love hears nothing, sees nothing. Other than love. And Nyalango was equally very charming. This made the strong Luanda Magere emotionally weak. So, as we all know, Nyakano Tektotar was out in the field tending to a cattle and sheep while Nyalango was in the homestead. When Luanda Magere fell in, and he had to tell Nyalango to rush to the herbalist and bring him medication. Nyalango ran as fast as a leg school taker because we know very well that they run too fast. That is the only thing. Luanda Magere was waiting for her wife and when she got back and tried to pierce the body of the Luanda Magere, she tried and something strange was happening. She could not penetrate the body of Luanda Magere. It was hard as a rock, very tough. Luanda Magere had to spill the beans and told Nyalango, look at the shadow and cut the shadow. When Nyalango cut the shadow, something strange happened. His blood started to ooze from the shadow of Luanda Magere. 
that marked the beginning of the end of the reign of the people of Sidoplano of Kano. Rwanda Magiri had spilled beans. He had told Nyalango the source of his strength. Later that evening, Nyalango rushed back to her people and told them what she had found out. Oh, that was what the Nyalango needed. A week later, they will know what doing what they know how to do best. Tending to their ships, doing their business as usual. But when they heard the sound of drums of battle coming from the Jolango, oh, when Luanda Makabere heard this, as a warrior that he was, he stood up, took his tongue, and his sokumba, and was ready to go out in battle. But then, Mikai refused and told Rwanda Magere, Please, Chora, and me kiki the elwen. Dolango gyo singe o situa. Give me o tibi marat, and me kiki the elwen. But the strong Rwanda Magere refused and told Dolango, I am a warrior. I was born a warrior, and I will die a warrior. Piang togi lume toge. Rwanda Magere got out and was ready to go into the battlefield. And as always, the strong Luanda Magere fought as fearly as he could when he got into the battlefield. But just as the Yolango were about to lose, one of the warriors remembered something. Aim nowhere but the shadow. So the Yolango warrior, Yolango no chunga chunga ma be, upima pima, kose pimo, no by a by a tongue on the bear. He threw the arrow straight into the shadow of Luanda Magere's chest. And just then, a loud thud was heard. Silence. The battlefield came to a silence. What? People of Sidu clan of Kano so peace, they were amazed. They couldn't believe their eyes. Ango moti more, ango moti more, ango moti more ne luanda yawa. Ango moti more, ango moti more, ango moti more ne luanda yawa. The sun that once shone for the people of Sito clan was finally setting. The joy and peace that they once shared was now being taken away right before their eyes. They couldn't believe. They couldn't believe what they saw. Their savior, their warrior, their hope had been taken away from them. What a sad day for them. But just then, as they were all in the mood of silence, something strange happened. From where Luanda Makere was sleeping, a rock started to fall. Big, 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 big and bigger. When the Yolango saw this, they ran like dogs because they were afraid. They couldn't understand what was going on with their tails between their legs. But for the people, but for the people of Sido clan of Kano, they were in pain. What they once treasured the most was no longer with them and finally had turned into a rock. The rock stands until bent. And as I speak to you this afternoon, the rock of the fallen hero Luanda Magere stands strong in Sido clan of Kano. And I urge all of us 
and all our visitors here with us today and our seers please don't leave Kisumu without paying homage to the great Luanda Make. Luanda, Luanda, Luanda Make. Luanda, Luanda, Luanda Make. Luanda, Luanda, Luanda Luanda Make. Luanda, Luanda, Luanda Luanda Make. Luanda Magere, another one from Story Maker Society, SMS.